Well, hello. Welcome to this informative short video on private family banking. It might be your introduction and the first time you're even exposed to what this is. I'm glad to be able to help. So let's get started. It's about building wealth and keeping it like the Rothschilds. Wealth isn't measured by how much you make. It's how much you keep. Cornelius Vanderbilt and Rothschilds are two different magnets from a long time ago. Well, let's talk about them. Vanderbilt died and had $105 million. Now look, this is in 1800s. So of course he left a million dollars to the university and they named him for it. And he left $104 million to his heirs. Now, 92 years later, not even a full century gone, out of the 120 Vanderbilts that were together, there wasn't a single millionaire among them. Rothschild, on the other hand, he died in the early 1800s and had a three-part wealth system set in place for his family. <clears throat> he wanted the family's wealth to be kept in one bank together. He wanted the family to know that they could take a loan but if you took the loan, you had to repay the loan. We'll go over some of the basic rules, but that's important. That's key. And three, the family would meet once a year to share in the lessons learned. If not, you weren't part of the family bank. So who knows about this family banking? Let me tell you, the government knows about the family banking. JFK, McCain used the funds for his campaign. Joe Biden has over $9 million in cash value that he's using. Reagan, we have 50, at least 54 elected professionals using cash value so that they know how to campaign and have those funds available for themselves. Corporations know about family banking. J.C. Penney, back in the Great Depression, when he couldn't pay his employees and couldn't get a loan, he took the cash value of his insurance policy to pay his company and his employees. Had that not happened, J.C. Penney wouldn't have survived. You know, the biggest one on here is Disney. He was told, your idea is really bad. We're not going to give you any money. So he started Disney, California, out of the cash value of his policy. Walmart, back in the day, had 1.2 million policies, not cash value, because if you have an insured interest, you could put a policy on every employee. It's amazing. The truth is, corporations know it's out there, but you know what's really phenomenal? Banks know about family banking. Yep, Citibank has $4. million there. J.P. Morgan has close to $10 billion. Wells Fargo and Bank of America, look, they're close to $20 billion in cash value policies. Now, if the banks are doing this, we should learn what this is all about. There's three ways to see money. You can see it as a spender, which is what most of us know. You can be a saver and an investor, or you could be a banker. It's not to say that you can't be one, two, and all three of them. The spender sees money as a way to buy stuff, but every purchase costs him interest. If you're borrowing money, you have to pay the interest. If you pay cash, you're giving up the interest that you could be making, so it never builds up. The saver sees money as a way to buy investments, and you have a hope that it goes up in value. It's not usually liquid so it's hard to get hold of and of course it costs in taxes think about this and in the in the investment game if you had a hundred thousand dollars it goes up ten percent the first year and then let's say the second year it goes down by ten percent are you even well the truth is yet yeah, are up ten percent then you're down ten percent you're actually below your level so the investment risk game is big. You know, back in 2008, when lots of people lost 50% of their account, 
in order to come back, they have to make 100%. Huh, that's a tough thing to do. Needless to say, taxes always are part of what comes out of a, a check and makes us shake our heads. So the banker, how does he view money? Money's a way to make money. Every purchase, every loan is an opportunity for a gain and always keeps money moving and working. In the banking world, there's a constant flow of money. Why? Because compound interest is the answer. That's interest earned on accumulated interest. Good old Einstein called it the most powerful force in the universe. So that wealth curve works in your advantage, especially if you have more time. So private family banking allows you to stay on that wealth curve for the rest of your life. What if we could use your own money without giving up the interest? Let's take a quick look. This is just one simple example. I know each of us are different, but let's look at spending money on cars. <clears throat> First, you could borrow the money, you could pay cash for the money, or you could be a banker for the money. Let's take a look at this real quick. So, let's say in a lifetime you purchase 11 cars. And for giggles, we'll say they averaged $30,000. As a cash buyer, you would have paid $330,000. If I say, you got a loan, let's just say it's 5% on an average, you would have paid $373,000. So one car more, you say, well, maybe that was, you know, not that much of a disadvantage. But how would you like to know what the bank has made? You ready? The bank made $300,000. I know it's crazy, all part of where we're at, but wow, is all I have to say. So, <clears throat> which would you prefer to be? The borrower, the cash payer, or that banker? Private family banking actually allows you to use your money earning interest, and you can still borrow money at a greater percent. Now, how does that work? How to make money when you have a lower interest earning rate than you do in spending, let me show you. So that car, $30,000, 60 payments. What did we say? At 5%. All right, there you go. You would have spent three, $33,000, almost $34,000 on a car. But let's say you have that same $30,000 in the bank and you earn 4%, huh, you would have earned 36, almost $3,700, uh, $37,000. So in math, anywhere in math, 36 is greater than 33. So now you've got a difference that's on the positive side, even though your savings rate is lower. And you know the reason for that, right? This is compounded interest. It happens on the interest that's earned. This happens on a decreasing balance. So let's just say even if your interest rate goes up to eight, you are now at a break even, but you could have been in the market and at the end, you have your $30,000 back and you have your car. So that's if you become the banker. I know that's a little fast and, and you might want to go see that again. So come back and watch again if you'd like to. Or give me a jingle. But here we go. Falling off the wealth curve, what does that look like? You know, let's just say at 20, you finally saved up for that first car. And instead of using the family bank, you bought the car, and then you go up the wealth curve. What did that cost you? About $400,000. That's the difference of falling off the wealth curve. 
And we do this in our life so often because we didn't stay on or you didn't know and no one taught you. Let me show you. Here's another way to see sort of the wealth curve and the effect that we have. If you get one penny a day and you double it, do you know what happens at the end of a month? You end up with four pennies in three days. At the end of the week, you have 64 cents. At the end of two weeks, your penny, which is double daily, is at $81.92. At the end of three weeks, it's $10,000. At the end of four weeks, you have over a million dollars, almost a million four. Now here's what happens. Look, on day 29, you have $2.6 million. Huh, there you go. Day 30, you have $5 million. And day 31, because that happens to be maybe July or August, and you now have $10 million, almost $11 million. That's pretty cool. That's if you earn 100% interest. And I get that nobody earns 100% interest, but that's just the power of showing what compounded interest can do. But let's just say, you know, on day four, uh, on your third week here, what happens if you finally got the $40,000 and you go and buy a car? You know what happens? You have to get off the wealth curve. And now you have to restart the bank. And you know, unfortunately, a week later, you have 64 cents. And at the end of the month, you only have $1.28. So the impact of coming off that wealth curve, that's just crazy. I know it's at least a visual. I liked that visual. So where do we get compounded interest? Savings account, CDs, and inside insurance contracts. Now, these aren't just any insurance contract. We'll go over that. But private family banking creates a pool of money where you can continue to earn compounded interest and that becomes collateral for your loan so that you get to keep the interest and build. The rules for private family banking really is to pay yourself, pay yourself the interest and then you have to recapture the money. Private family banking, if you control your banking system, you capture the interest. Just think about that. How would your savings change if you could recapture the money that you've been throwing away? Let's take a look. On an average, it says nationally we spend 34.5% on interest. You know, between our house, our car, our living, and assuming we save 10%. So what if you could capture that interest and instead of giving it away, it's there for you. Look, instead of the bank getting the money, it goes back into your pool of money. The interest on your credit card, it goes back into your pool of money, your bank. What if your real estate investments, the interest came back to you? Yep. That's what it would look like. You'd have the interest plus your savings. So instead of being on a negative wealth curve, you'd be on the positive wealth curve. I know that's slightly overwhelming. So what does this life insurance policy give to you? It gives you liquidity, safety, guaranteed growth. It's protected from taxes. It's protected from judgments. There is no risk. There's guarantees. There's no penalties when you draw, withdraw this money. It's liquid. You get to control that money. It's protected from creditors. You can leverage that money for yourself. It can grow tax deferred and it's tax free upon distribution. And it becomes collateral for your loans. Those are the benefits. There's a life insurance policy 
and we build it for the cash value, but there's a death benefit for it. There's even some major medical that comes in there for you. A college savings plan. It is absolutely tax protected and it is the number one tool used in estate planning. There's a reason why Joe Biden has $19 million in cash value. I know we all have different needs and what I want you to know is that if this is your first time through, take a look. Know that I'm going to give you everything that I can. That's my motto that I live by. Do what's right, be your best, believe the best, and be kind always. So I will do whatever I can to help you. Nelson Nash is the founder of Infinite Banking. He said everyone should be in two businesses, what they do for a living and the banking business. I want to thank you for watching this. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. Go ahead and visit the website below, privatefamilybanking.com forward slash Vilma dash Bloom. There's extra videos there. But more than anything, let me know what you thought, and I look forward to talking to you soon.